and welcome to another edition of DT Live. Hope everybody's doing well. For those of you that are hanging out in the chat, give me a thumbs up if the audio is okay. Oh, let me make sure I mute the stream here on my end. I have not done one of these solo live streams in a while and probably mm, two or three months. I have not ever done one of these live streams on Herbs Luft WM, which is the window manager I am using today. Let me change some of what's going on here in OBS. I was running a little late trying to get here. And let's change the title. How about DT Live exclamation. There we go. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, so we got a few folks hanging out in the chat. All right. And so, a couple of hours ago, I sent out the uh, the notice that I was going to do one of these these impromptu kind of live streams. I don't really have anything planned to discuss, uh, nothing really scripted. And so I did mention, though, that I was uh, gonna, going to discuss, I guess, the state of the YouTube channel, things, I, you know, things that are going on as far as, you know, videos I'm planning on making and I plan on taking a vacation actually this week I took off from work for not working my regular job for the next nine days so getting a much needed vacation there I'll also take a little bit of a break from the channel I still make some content but maybe not as much although I've kind of slacked off uh, on some of the content really the last couple of weeks because I knew I was going to be taking this vacation very soon so uh, again, I, I needed a, a little extra time, so this week I'm going to focus mainly on sleep. <laughs> going to catch up on some sleep. Uh, by the way, this evening, I uh, sitting here, I picked up one of my favorites, my favorite adult beverage, uh, one, of, one of the go-tos, Blue Moon. Blue Moon is not bad. And for those of you that were around earlier today, of course, I uh, did some window manager hopping earlier today. I hopped to Herbs Luft WM and I still am not sure about all the key bindings here in Herbs Luft so you will have to excuse me I probably am going to fumble around a lot today uh, if I show you anything about Herbs Luft but this is Herbs Luft uh, as is right now it hasn't changed since that video I did earlier matter of fact one of the reasons I was a little late starting the stream and why I was still fumbling around with some of the scenes in uh, OBS is because I had to actually pull up my herbs luft config and actually see some of the key bindings because I couldn't arrange uh, some of the windows here in such a way that they would be captured in OBS the way I wanted because I, I didn't know how to toggle Floating mode, toggle tiling mode, you know, a lot of the basic window functionality in Herbs Luft. I, I still haven't uh, taken the time to learn just yet. Again, I just switched to Herbs Luft. Earlier today, this morning, I decided it was time for, for a change. So my Herbs Luft config, I may need to refer to that as we go forward. A lot of you guys were hanging out in the chat earlier. I, I know some of you guys that were around as soon as I sent out the notification were wondering, you know, I've mentioned the state of the channel. You guys were pondering, was it going to be like a big announcement, like I was going back to Windows and leaving Linux? And for those of you wondering that, I do have some bad news. Uh, no, I'm not going to Windows. I'm staying on Linux. Uh, don't plan on any kind of... Uh, living in windows for six months kind of experiments or anything like that I, I, I often get you guys asking me this sort of thing you know would i give windows a shot because it's been so long since i've used windows lived in windows oh no that's, that's not going to be something i do i'm perfectly happy on linux i don't plan on switching operating systems switching distros maybe but we're going to stay with a GNU slash linux operating system some of you guys that were Early in the chat here, as soon as we started the stream, we had uh, Crusader and K Wells. Jared, how you doing? Open Sousa. Yeah, I like Open Sousa. Tumbleweed's great. And I guess we had some distro recommendations. Horatio liked FreeBSD, Manjaro Open Box, Triscoll, in that order. 
Uh, free BSD number one. I need to give Free BSD a shot one day. I tried Ghost BSD, but it it wasn't ready for prime time. At least when I took a look at, uh, at Ghost BSD uh, about a year ago. Uh, let's see who else we have here. Tigwent, Kenosh. I hope I pronounced these usernames right. Uh, yeah, Gian says hi, Derek. How you doing, Gian? Chas is here. King Zero, Emmanuel. Ginger Kitty. Yeah. William Armstrong is also in the chat. How you doing, William? It's been a while since I talked to you, William. Hope you're doing well. And Kevin. You're just going on a short vacation, right? Uh, that's the plan. Uh, taking this next week off from work. As far as I, I will make content on the channel. So today... It's the first day off, and, you know, I made a couple of videos today. I made the video earlier this morning about Herb Luft, and, of course, I decided to do this live stream here, mainly to let you guys know I was going on vacation. Beyond that, do I have anything else that I'm committed to doing this week? I'm going to do Taking Into Account, episode 34, Thursday. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm going to try to take care of that for sure, and I'm sure that I will find time to make I don't know a couple of other videos uh but because I'm not working and I'm so limited on free time and I always have like a ton of stuff I need to do there were some things I wanted to do this week if I could actually figure out how to switch desktop layouts here let me all right give me just a second guys you know pull up a browser one of the things I actually started uh, a couple of days ago was I really wanted to do a little more with my GitLab page so you guys know I share all my dot files and you know push everything to to GitLab one of the things I started doing was I wanted to do some better documentation over at GitLab so I wanted to basically create a readme file for pretty much everything that I think needs a readme so I've got configs for openbox qtile i3 uh, DWM, Xmonad, I recently pushed my Herbs Luft configs, uh, you know, all these different window managers I've used. I, th I think I even have pushed configs for JWM and maybe even Fluxbox, things I looked at on the channel when I did the Obscure Window Manager project. I see a, a folder here for FVWM. I'm not sure if anybody wants to take a look at that, but that's just, you know, a quick and dirty config I did for. Uh, the video I did for the Obscure Window Manager project. For those of you that were around in the early days of the channel, I uh, did 12 videos called the Obscure Window Manager project, where I took a look at 12 obscure window managers. They were uh, Fluxbox, Openbox, FVWM, JWM, IceWM, i3, Qtile, Awesome, Xmonad, <laughs> and one or two other. I think Herbs Luft was somewhere in there as well. Uh, I never got around to taking a look at DWM during that time, so that's why I recently hopped to DWM and spent you know a month on DWM and loved DWM. I was really glad I did that. Also, I've never taken a look at BSPWM. Some of you keep asking me, will I get around to taking a look at BSPWM as far as me living in it for a month or two? Yep, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm definitely committed to doing that. I was going to do Herbs Luft first because Herbs Luft I think will be a little bit different and kind of challenging for me because of the workflow. So uh, yeah, so I've several of you in the chat are asking about yeah, Herbs Luft um, or BSPWM. Dermax says you should really try BSPWM. I, I'm, it's going, going to happen. Probably will be the next one I hop to when I'm done with Herbs to Lift. You know, I I don't stick to these tiling window managers that long, at least what I've been doing for 2019. I play with them until I kind of get them configured to my liking and I figure out, you know, I've kind of got it set up and then I move to something else. So, catch up a little bit on the chat here. Let's see. So, yeah, Fedora Firefox doesn't actually play YouTube, at least for me. That's Big Pod. Ah, uh, Fedora. And Firefox doesn't play YouTube. Not sure what you need on that. I'm sure it's missing some sort of codec or something. Uh, maybe it's because it requires some non-free stuff that isn't in the Fedora repos. You might have to enable uh, a non-free repo in Fedora. 
Yeah, Bruno says, enjoy your time off. I'm sure I'm going <laughs> to enjoy my time. Is it a vacation vacation or is it a staycation? Uh, I'm not sure yet. I might do some traveling. We'll see. But again, I'll be around a little bit. You'll still get a couple of videos, even if I leave town. Let's see, Jared, what is your day job, DT? I work in retail. Uh, I don't work with computers. That's usually one of the things you guys ask me, you know, in my real life work, do I actually work with Linux? Am I a sysadmin or anything like that? No, I'm not. Don't work with Linux. I don't work with computers at all. So. Not a programmer, not a div. Yeah, William, I went on a Linux vacation myself. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. I'm assuming by Linux vacation you mean you went back to Windows for a little bit. Shame on you, William. Yeah, hello DT. How would you partition a 1TB SSD for Ubuntu or Arch? Um, how would I partition it? Well, in Ubuntu, you could just let Ubuntu do the automatic partitioning. Typically, it's going to create, what, a swap and then give the rest of it, you know, to just one big partition. I think Ubuntu, doesn't it have a box you can tick on if you want to do a separate home partition? Of course, you could just let Ubuntu do the automatic partitioning. If you wanted to do it yourself, uh, I mean, you could divvy up that, that one terabyte SSD yourself in a gparted or with fdisk or cfdisk or whatever utility you want to do as far as if you're asking me what size you should make you know a, a home partition or whatever a boot partition and maybe you want a separate partition for a very large video library you got or music library i mean you, you kind of got to figure that out uh, for your own particular needs Typically, though, I don't bother with a separate home partition. The separate home partition is nice if you never plan on distro hopping. You know, as far as I'm, I'm installing Ubuntu, and the only distro I foresee me using ever is going to be Ubuntu. Then that separate home partition makes sense because when I reinstall, you know, the next version of Ubuntu, everything should work on that separate home partition. But if you hop a lot, uh, having that separate home partition can be tricky when you hop, say, from Ubuntu to OpenSUSE or Fedora or whatever, Gentoo. Because a lot of those, especially the config files in your home directory, that home partition, aren't going to work when you hop to a completely different uh, Linux distribution. Don't be surprised if things like, you know, your bash RC and things like that uh, are just completely goofed up. All right, I think I lost some of the chat. A lot of you guys hanging out in the chat. Sorry if I if I didn't keep up with this. Let's see. Yeah, I did retail 20 plus years. IBM 4690 specialist. Retired from that four years ago. Good deal, Chess. Uh, Bruno, are you married? Nope. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, GPT partition. Well, yeah, if you want to do... Uh, Master boot record, I think you need to do DOS. GPT, if you're going to do UEFI. Uh, Ginger Kitty was, was helping you out there. Let's see, DT, are you interested in cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology? A little interested in them. Uh, I got to admit, you know, I'm, I'm kind of curious about them. I haven't uh, really delved into that uh, that information as far as what you know the whole blockchain technology entails I should look into it a little more it is interesting though I find it a fascinating subject I, I don't ever plan on being one of those people that start setting up you know dedicated mining rigs or anything like that that doesn't interest me but the technology behind it interests me yeah, Jonathan says, hi, DT. Quick question. What desktop environment window manager are you using right now? As of about 10 a.m. today, I'm on Erbst Luft WM. <laughs> uh, before that, in the last month, I've been on Xmonad. The month before that, I was on DWM. And the month before that, I was on i3. And then back in 2018, I was on Qtal for the latter half of 2018. The early half of 2018, open box was the window manager I spent most of my time in. Been window manager hopping a lot. 
lately. I've been hopping window managers more than hopping distros. Hop, distro hopping is no longer interesting to me. Uh, mainly because uh, I've never really seen much difference from distro A to distro B to distro C. Of course, you know, I do You know, sometimes these distro reviews on the channel. I take a look at a whatever distro that just came out. You know, the latest releases on distrowatch.com. I'll take a look at them. But for the most part, they're all the same to somebody like me. Uh, not necessarily to other folks, but for somebody that uses Linux the way I do, which is, again, a lot of stuff just in a terminal. I open a terminal, use a lot of command line applications, a lot of terminal-based applications. Uh, I never use the desktop environments that come pre-installed with things like Ubuntu and Fedora and SUSE. Well, you know, I don't, you guys know I don't use GNOME, KDE, XFCE. I never use those big desktop environments. If I install a distro and it came with that stuff, I rip it out and then install something like OpenBox or Qtile or whatever on that, on that uh, distro. So uh, all my Linux installs end up being exactly the same. It's going to be whatever window manager I wanted to use with my personal configs using a lot of terminal based applications. So every distro is pretty much the same to me. When I install Xmonad on Fedora, it's the same as Xmonad on Ubuntu, which is the same as Xmonad on Gentoo, because it's all my configs, all the same key bindings. It works exactly 100% the same. Uh, it doesn't matter what the distro is uh, underneath. The distro underneath only matters once you get into package management. Then it's a little different because you're dealing with different package managers. You know, Debian and Ubuntu have apt. Arch has you know, Pac-Man. You know, Gentoo has Emerge. Fedora has DNF. But other than that, other than the package manager and the fact that some distros are on a static release model and other distros are on a rolling release model, the distros don't matter to me. So I've slowed down on the distro hopping. Uh, of course, I haven't reviewed that many distros in the last couple of months, too. I've slowed down on that on the channel and focused more on, again, window manager hopping, which I know a lot of you guys were interested in some of this stuff. A lot of you guys were really interested in i3, especially. And a lot of you guys were, have been pushing for DWM for a while. A lot of people are interested in suckless. Uh, oddly enough, which I'm still using a lot of the suckless utilities. I still have the surf browser installed on my system. I sometimes pull it up and play with it. I am using D menu. Uh, I replaced Rofi with D menu. Uh, I like Rofi. I like D menu. They both work, but I still have D menu installed and I'm using it. And my terminal is still ST. So the simple terminal works just fine. All right. And this is my desktop right now. I got a floating window here. That's just Firefox. But yeah, this is uh, Herbs Luft WM. The panel at the top is Polybar. So I installed Polybar to work with Herbs Luft here. I'm going to catch up on some of the chat. Yeah, once in i3, you will never look back. Is that true? Uh, it wasn't true for me. Uh, i3 was probably the least favorite tiling window manager I've lived in in the last three months. And I've lived in, what, five or six? <laughs> uh, I3 wasn't bad. I mean, I, I didn't hate it. It was, uh, you know, I got all my work done in it. But uh, I didn't find it. Uh, there, there was nothing really special about I3 compared to the dozens of other tiling window managers that are out there. Also, I, I3 had some strange bugs that I encountered along the way that kind of uh, annoyed me. One of the things is i3 j did not play well with VirtualBox, which kind of sucks since I do so much in VMs. Let's see, Mr. GFY is in the house. Dedicated hard drive just for time shift and deja vu backup. Yeah, you want to have, you know, a, a, basically a dedicated backup drive. That's not a bad idea. Um... Uh, of course, if you're going to have a completely dedicated drive, uh, instead of just doing a dedicated drive for the snapshots, you could actually just do a, a RAID for a backup, although that's not really, RAIDs are not really designed for backups, but doesn't hurt either. 
Yeah, all distros have wget or curl and make gcc all you really need. That's true. That's not, you know, once you strip away the desktop environment that was shipped with whatever distro underneath, they're all the same. That's why they're all the same to me is because, oh, you know, the next version of Ubuntu is going to have GNOME 3.32, well, whatever. I'm not going to use GNOME anyway if I installed Ubuntu on one of my machines, like on a laptop to test it out. You know, might keep GNOME on it for a week just to say I used GNOME, but shortly after there, you know, I'm, I'm destroying GNOME. I'm going to completely wipe everything GNOME related off that install of Ubuntu and install, you know, Fluxbox or whatever, you know, whatever floats my boat that particular month. Yeah, William says Debian Buster is in testing Frozen for a release soon. Yeah, and we should get Debian 10. Sometime soon. I'm interested in reasons not to use a tiling window manager. Struggling to think of any. There's no real reason not to use a tiling window manager. I'm, other than, you know, preference. Some people prefer working with the keyboard. Some don't. Other than whether you're a keyboard user or not. Uh, no real negatives to using a tiling window manager as far as the workflow and how what, what happens actually on your desktop. Tiling window manager gives you more control of what how the windows are drawn on the screen and arranged on the screen. Uh, tiling windows managers have a lot of positives. The only real negative, again, is if you're not much of a keyboard user. Yeah, Bean says, D-Menu for the win. D-Menu has been fantastic. And I've used D-Menu in the past. I mean, I've used D-Menu when I first uh, encountered Linux, you know, 10 years ago or whatever. Uh, installed Xmonad way back then. I installed D-Menu. D-Menu was great then. And then recently found Rofi as a D-Menu alternative. Rofi's great. Now I'm back on D-Menu. Of course, I terminal emulator hop a lot. I'm using ST, the simple terminal right now. But in the last year... I've used Xterm, URXVT, Termite. All four of those terminal emulators are just fine. I would be happy using any of them. Yeah, Douglas, best window manager in your opinion in terms of efficiency, fluidity. I have only tried i3. Um, they're all efficient and, and fluid as far as... Uh, if you're asking in terms of speed... Every tiling window manager I've ever tried has been fast. I mean, they're they're minimal lightweight by design. I mean, they're you know, there's not much to a tiling window manager. So, so if you're asking about speed and performance, i3, awesome, Xmonad, Qtile, whatever. And I mentioned Qtile. Qtile is written in Python. Some people ask, well, isn't Qtile slower than DWM, which is written in C, or Xmonad, which is written in Haskell? C and Haskell are very fast <laughs> programming languages languages and python seen as a slow programming language programs that are written in python typically are slower than pr programs written in c or haskell well that is true for for some things uh, but keep in mind qtile is just a window manager we're not doing anything complicated in qtile all qtile is is the border around a window and it's you know determining where your application basically is put on the screen it's it's not doing anything heavy. So Qtile is really as fast as Xmonad in a lot of ways. Uh, in my opinion, I, I use both all the time. So we're talking again, performance and speed. Every window manager I've tried, as tiling window manager I've tried is equally as fast. As far as efficiency, if you're talking about workflow, they all have similar workflows. Uh, well, there are some differences. You have a DWM, Awesome, Xmonad, and Qtile that have one kind of workflow. They all share the same kind of workflow, the same paradigm. The way they handle multi-monitors and the way they have uh, their dynamic layouts. And dynamic meaning these layouts are already pre-built. It's hard-coded in the system. You can change the layouts a little bit if you want to play with the the configs, but then you have a different group of tiling window managers like i3 and Herbs Luft, which I'm living in today, which are manual tilers, meaning 
that I have to determine where the windows appear on the screen. Well, I don't have to. I could have pre-built layouts with them in both i3 and Herb's Luft. But let me change the layout here so you can actually see my desktop. So let me change the focus here. So this monitor has focus. You see this green border around the frame here. This frame is where the next window I open on this monitor will appear. If I open a terminal right now, you can see that's where that would appear. I'm going to close that. Now let me do mod O. Mod O splits the screen into two different frames. The one on the left, of course, has focus. If I do mod enter again to open a terminal, that's where the terminal would open. But if I mod L to move over to the right, you can see the right frame now has focus. That's where that window would appear. And of course, I could change this layout with mod O again to split it again uh, vertically or mod U to split it horizontally and of course with mod H and L to move left and right I could keep splitting things however I want to do this uh, I mean I could come up with some pretty unique layouts and then I could just place windows wherever so this key binding here opens H top for me H top or that uh, excuse me CMUS uh, and if I wanted to I could mod J to go down J the Vim key for down and then do my key binding for H top there and so on and so forth so let me close the windows that are open and to remove the frames mod R will remove all the frames until there's no more frames to get rid of mod shift C it's my key binding to close so I3 and Herb's Luft are what are called manual tilers meaning that I can decide where those programs that I open are going to be placed on the screen on the fly there's it's not a pre-built layout the way DWM, Xmonad, Awesome all have that master and stack default layout that I love so much where one window opens on the right hand, left hand side of the screen, the next program opens on the left hand side of the screen, and then that left hand column just all the other programs are stacked over there. I like that master and stack layout though. I don't like doing this manual tiling. It's not for me. All right, so window manager window maker is quite interesting. Yeah, I should take a look at window maker. You guys have asked about window maker uh, quite a bit on the channel too, and I haven't done anything with window maker yet. I should. I should do another obscure window manager project. Make sure I put uh, window maker on the list. That. You know, can anyone tell me the path and file you can edit to change desktop? in Manjaro, the, the path and file which you can edit to change desktop. Um, what are you, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by change the desktop. And that was Peter asking that. You asking about changing your desktop session, not like what you log into, if you've got multiple window managers installed. Yeah. Mr. GFY, tiling windows remind me of TMUX terminal. Yeah, you can, of course, use TMUX or screen. Uh, they are basically a way to tile inside a terminal. If you're already using a tiling window manager, though, just open up another terminal and tile your terminals. But if you're not using a tiling window manager and still want to have that tiling effect in a terminal, if you use a terminal all day, TMUX is great. Yeah, so, yeah, Chris Titus Tech is in the chat. How you doing, Chris? For those of you not subscribed to Chris, you need to check out his channel. He does some really great stuff. So, well, we'll definitely check that out. What are you checking out? Oh, Big Pod is suggesting you take a look at OpenBox. Yeah, OpenBox is always highly recommended. Very configurable. Floating window manager. You can do some pseudo tiling with it. The real power, powerful feature of OpenBox, though, is the fact that it comes with those pipe menus or dynamic menus where you can write a bash script or a Python script and have the output from that script appear in that OpenBox right click menu. Really neat. So I could create a script where in my OpenBox right click menu I could have a five day weather forecast or the top or the last 10 posts from a forum or you know 
you can get really creative. Whatever you can imagine as far as a script, you can output it in that open box right click menu. You don't want anything too complicated or anything that the output takes a long time, like several seconds to appear because you know it's going to mess up your menu. You're going to go to right click on the desktop thinking your application menu is going to come up and it's going to be long pauses, especially if it's having to go out on the internet and find something. Yeah, Midnight Commander is awesome. Yeah, for a file manager, Midnight Commander is not bad. I I haven't taken a look at Midnight Commander uh, lately. I should. Let me go back to... Again, I'm struggling here with Herbs Luft as far as some of the key bindings. My file manager of choice, you guys know here lately, has been uh, VIFM, uh, the VI file manager. It's basically a terminal-based file manager that includes a lot of Vim like key bindings so uh, I have uh, a single quote H hotkey to take me to my home directory this is my home directory I have uh, previews enabled by default so right now in the left hand pane of VIFM uh, is actually the file manager and the right hand pane is the previews uh, I'm on on a directory right now so the preview of a directory is just listing the files that are in that directory but if I go down to an actual file like my X resources file you can see the preview is the text from that file but if I go to a image so let me go to my backgrounds directory here you can see the preview is actually the image the image is done with a really neat Python based application called Uberzug I did a video about Uberzug recently and I've done one or two videos about VIFM really neat file manager uh, Vim keys so GG to go to the top of the document, GG to go to the top of the directory. Uh, capital G, of course, to the bottom of the directory. Uh, you could give it, you know, I don't know, five capital G to go to the fifth entry here in the directory. And it, and it does include the dot dot, which is, you know, the basically the alias for the parent directory. Of course, colon Q for quit. For those of you wondering how to quit VIFM or Vim in general, so many folks seem to struggle exiting Vim. I don't know why. When you launch Vim, it tells you how to quit. I don't know if any of you guys have ever noticed that. Uh, let me go back to my desktop here. But when you first launch Vim, if I just opened a blank document in Vim, type colon Q to exit. <laughs> so you guys really should pay attention. Let me zoom in. <laughs> uh, it goes away when I zoom. Oh, well. But... It does give you that hint. <laughs> yeah, NNN. That's, you know, I did install that very briefly. There is a terminal based file manager called NNN. Uh, it had some strange key bindings as far as navigation. Uh, VIFM really just makes sense. Like, if you are a Vim user, and you're used to using the Vim navigation keys, HJKL, and then, you know, things like GG or capital G. Uh, YY, yank in Vim, is copy in VIFM. DD to delete. Uh, you know, all the stuff that normally, you know, all the standard key bindings you use all the time in Vim, they work in VIFM. So there's not as much of a learning curve. NNN used use some strange key bindings I didn't like. Ranger, Ranger did use a lot of Vim-like key bindings too, so Ranger was pretty intuitive when you first get into it. It doesn't use all the Vim key bindings that something like VIFM does, though. Yeah, DT, do you have any IRCs that you frequent, or maybe a DistroTube IRC channel on Freenode? You know, that is not a bad suggestion. So I don't have any IRC uh, channels that I frequent all the time. Uh, it's not just, I don't hang out in chat rooms all the time. And I messed up my layout here. Excuse me, guys. Still trying to figure herbs to lift out. Uh, the only chat rooms I ever really connect to over on the Freenode network on IRC, I do occasionally check out the uh, hashtag Linux channel, uh, hashtag Arch Linux occasionally because they're pretty active and, you know, you find neat information over there uh, as people are asking support questions. Sometimes check out the Ubuntu channel. Sometimes I check out the Gentoo channel. 
uh, programming ch channels. I sometimes check out P the Python channel as well. Um, sometimes I check out the Haskell channel, <laughs> as, I, as that sounds, but sometimes I need help uh, configuring Xmonad, which is written entirely in Haskell, so that's why I do that. Let me see if I can log in to my R IRC here. So, give me just a second, guys. I had to do this off camera because I did actually have to type in a password. All right, so this is my desktop. So I launched my IRC client here, uh, IRC, I-R-S-S-I. And yes, I just created a DistroTube channel. So you guys that wanna join, uh, hashtag DistroTube, I'm the only user there. <laughs> uh, go ahead and I actually wouldn't mind keeping an IRC channel around uh, I do have a discord channel that I haven't logged into in at least six months and I know a lot of you guys hang out in the DistroTube discord I, I never fire up Discord. Uh, Discord mainly is for gaming. <laughs> you know, that's what it was originally designed for. Now, Discord has grown into something much bigger than just being used for gaming. Uh, and yes, some of you have already, uh, several of you are logging into IRC. Yeah, finally, free support. <laughs> uh, remark, hi, DT. <laughs> and I can zoom in here so you guys can actually... What, what terminal emulator am I using? I'm using ST today. Different uh, key bindings to zoom in depending on whether I'm using ST, URXVT, Xterm. They all have different key bindings. For I guess I could set them all the same. I probably should take the time to do that so it's not as jarring when I change to a different terminal emulator. <laughs> but Rich, all my windows float. <laughs> Very cool. All right, yeah, cheat sheets for the win. Yeah, I see a lot of these cheat sheets for various programs floating around on the internet. A lot of people share these cheat sheets over on Reddit for various programs, you know, for Vim or Emacs or whatever. And I think those are great. And I'll be honest, for some programs, I have considered printing out some of those cheat, cheat sheets and just keeping them on my desk. Yeah. Only time I ever get in Vim is if I forget to change it to Nano before doing the first commit in Git. Yeah, yeah. Most distros now, uh, instead of having VI set as the default editor, which they really should. <laughs> uh, traditionally, that's kind of the case. Is you know VI or Vim is the default editor, but most modern Linux distros know that a lot of people can operate in Vim, so they have GNU Nano installed, and hey, they have Nano set to be the default editor, which is fine. Nano actually is a really nice terminal text editor. Not as extensible as Vim, not even close to being as extensible as Vim. You can build Vim into something really nice as far as an IDE. DT, do you have a display manager or do you just use X init RC start X? I have a display manager because I have right now I think five or six different window managers installed on Manjaro, Qtile i3, DWM, Xmonad, and now Herbs Luft. Uh, it light DM. It makes things so much easier. So I, I I never play with the X init RC. I of course have one on the system, but it it doesn't get used because I don't launch uh, my window manager sessions with start X so light DM it just makes sense there's no reason not to use light DM as the name implies it's the light display manager so it's not like it's you know a ton of dependencies or it's you know some bloated program so if you have multiple desktop environments multiple window managers use a login manager it'll make your life a little easier <laughs> wow, several of you guys actually joined <laughs> this IRC channel. Uh, very cool. Well, you know what? While I'm on vacation, I might keep this up on my desktop <laughs> over the next few days. You guys want to chat. I mentioned I have a Discord channel I never go to because I, I just don't have time. I'm not sitting in front of my computer all day. The other thing about Discord is it's great for voice uh, chat. 
for things like gaming. Like if I was going to do a live gaming stream and I wanted to chat with other people in game, Discord makes sense. But just for sitting here and chatting all day with people, I hate Discord. And part of the reason I hate Discord is, you know, you guys see IRC here. This is your old school internet relay chat, <laughs> IRC, you know, old chat pro protocol, you know, from way back in the day. And it's just text, right? It's just beautiful text. Uh, typically, the conversations in any IRC channel are adult. And by adult, I mean, you know, older people, people, nobody's acting like a complete jackass, usually in IRC. Uh, if you do, you usually get booted pretty quick on most channels. Another thing is, um, uh, you know, Discord, most of the people that hang out on Discord, I'm just going to tell you, I, I gotta be honest, they typically are teenagers and Discord kind of caters to that with all the ability to share, you know, multimedia and post images and all the emojis everywhere on Discord. Uh, that's not me. But I could get I could get used to IRC. If you guys want to keep an IRC channel going, heck, I'm up for it. <laughs> you guys just yay or nay, and, and we'll we'll keep the IRC channel going. Yeah, isn't Discord an Electron app? I is it? Uh, I don't. I'm not. I'm not sure on that one. Yeah, Discord can be a resource hog. Yeah. But again, for what it is, like if I needed to do a video chat or a voice chat, especially doing like, a, again, a live game stream, Discord makes perfect sense for that. That's the right tool for the right job. If I just want to sit here and chat with somebody over the Internet, you know, just typing, just using, again, plain text, IRC all day long. Yeah, I haven't been on IRC for about five years. Yeah, Big Pod, yeah. I, I fire up Ursi every now and then. Again, I don't. There's no IRC channel that I just hang out in all the time. So you guys are, if you're asking where you you, you would typically find me on, you know, the Free Node Network, for example, nowhere in particular. Sometimes, I, again, I just hang out on the hashtag Linux channel or hashtag Arch channel, hashtag Gen2, just whatever I feel like checking out that day. And the uh, Linux channels, the Linux support channels, usually I I'm, I'm, don't even offer to help with support. Usually, like I'm doing something on my computer, uh, some project or something, I have it open. And occasionally I'll see somebody with an uh, interesting problem that I don't know how to fix. <laughs> and I, I think it's really interesting. So I see the other people help these people fix their problems. And it, yeah, it's just an educational kind of thing. I'm usually just not sitting in IRC all day chatting. As a matter of fact, you guys are sitting here in IRC in uh, hashtag DistroTube, and I still haven't said anything. All right, there we go. <laughs> uh, and, of course, my name is uh, in green here. Looks like all of you guys are in blue, except we do have a couple of people in purple. I wonder what the different colorations for your, your names are. Possibly some of you guys are registered maybe with the free node network and some of you guys are not. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. I, I don't know how to use IRC that much as far as like right now, you know, I'm the, the moderator of this channel. I don't know what all the functions are. If I wanted to kick Ansem out of this channel right now, I'm not sure. I, I'm, I think it's slash kick and then Ansem. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Ansem though. Or, you know, slash ban big pod. You know, I could. Um, but I'm really not sure if those are the actual commands. I'd have to do a refresher course myself on IRC. Uh, maybe you guys that are IRC pros could help me. Yeah, what chat server? Uh, I should have said this is the free node uh, network. Uh, it's the only IRC network I, I know of as far as the only one I ever go to. It's where pretty much all the free and open source projects, all the various Linux distros and programming languages and, you know, some of the free and open source apps, they all host channels over on the free node network. It is by far the biggest network for IRC, free node, freenode.net.
The chat said I'm sending too many messages. Oh, who was that? St. Raphael? You're sending too many messages. Ah, the YouTube chat. I was about to say, I, I don't know why it, IRC would tell you that. Yeah, YouTube does have a limit. If you send more than three messages within a few seconds, it's going to complain about you spamming the channel or something. So if you type, you know, a couple of really short things like OK and then an emoji and then something else, you know, like really fast, it's going to going to tell you to slow down. It's just YouTube settings. Uh, nothing I have control over. Also, YouTube and the YouTube chat, you can't post a link. You can post a link over on the IRC chat. <laughs> uh, okay, t uh, moderators do not have that uh, slowdown. <laughs> so Peter's testing it out. Peter, I made you a mod of the channel. So you can post whatever you want. You can also post links, but anybody that's not a mod, it's going to complain if they start spamming with too many messages really fast. Yeah, Ritual says, all right, I'm out, guys. Just thought I'd stop in and say hello. You take care. Have a good rest of the day. Oh, have a great evening, Ritual. I'm not going to be on too long tonight. Uh, well, I, I say I'm not going to be on too long, and we've been going about 45 minutes. Uh, I may go till about seven i know at seven o'clock a lot of you guys want to check out big daddy linux live uh, does a great live show every saturday night if you guys are not subscribed to big daddy linux live you really should rocco and the gang over there they do a great show every saturday night i try to catch them when i can if i'm not working uh, sometimes i do have to work saturday night so i can't catch every episode but if i'm around i i always check out what rocco and the gang are doing Back to the IRC chat channel. You guys, good suggestion on the IRC chat channel. <laughs> uh, let's see. What is a topic? No topic set. Well, let's set a topic. I think the command is slash topic set and then some message. How about this is for Linux E stuffs. Stuffs with a S. We'll make that plural. All right, there we go. Now we have a topic. So you guys can type slash topic, and now you should see the topic of the channel. What's the channel name? So I'm over on Freenode, uh, and it is hashtag distrotube. So if we're freenode.net slash hashtag distrotube. <laughs> Let's see. Again, I, I'm a complete IRC noob, so if you don't know how to get over to the Freenode network and connect to it, uh, I connect to Freenode automatically. I'm a registered user there, so all I have to do, since I'm already, my IRC client already connects to Freenode, to, to get any channel on Freenode, all I need to do is slash, well, let me get focus on this window, slash join, and then hashtag whatever channel, Arch Linux. There is an Arch Linux channel on Freenode, a very large Arch Linux channel. Uh, and if I hit enter, it would take me to the Arch Linux channel. Matter of fact, I can go ahead and join it real quick. This is the Arch Linux channel. There are 1,827 people currently in it. Uh, if I wanted to leave, I could slash leave. All right. Uh, what is this? Is this a private message from Big Pod? Hello, man. And I want to say Control Two or One or is it Alt One? Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, well, how about we join DistroTube again? There we go. All right. <laughs> And it's going to take me a little while to, to figure this all this out. But again, if you guys want to do more with IRC, yeah, we'll, we'll, definitely, we'll definitely keep doing this. All right. And I could play with this all day. 
Um, oh, earlier I mentioned uh, one of the things I wanted to do this week. I mentioned my GitLab page. I'm going to start adding readmes this week to all the different window managers. And I, I started this just a couple of days ago. So now if you go to my GitLab page and you want mo more information, better documentation for something like DWM, for example, I created a readme with a screenshot. And key bindings, not all my key bindings, but I eventually will get around to adding all the key bindings and, you know, how to patch DWM and everything right there in the readme. And you can even download my DWM build, of course. Or, you know, if you go to .xmonad here, my xmonad.hs is here. But I also created a readme with a screenshot, some of the default key bindings. Well, not the default, but my key bindings for xmonad. Of course, I will also include some other information, maybe how to extend xmonad maybe add you know named scratch pads to xmonad or whatever you know function you may want to add so this is going to take some time me adding you know proper documentation <laughs> to some of this stuff but it's one of the things i wanted to do i think it's going to be a neat little project so that's one of the things this week if i'm not making content but i, I still want to play around with linuxy stuff I, i'm going to spend some more time uh, straightening out my dot .files repository over on GitLab, getting it kind of organized. Uh, I still need to build a proper website one day. <laughs> I need to get around to that. Uh, I might do that this week. Might work on a website. Maybe. Not committed to that. Committed to the GitLab, <laughs> but uh, we may not get around to a website. I need to do my taxes this week. I still haven't filed my taxes, uh, so I I'm definitely need to take a day, you know, a couple of hours one day to... To do that, I'll, I'll do it myself. And that is really the plan for this week. Again, uh, I'll do taking into account Thursday, and I'll probably do a couple of other programs, uh, videos this week. Now, some of you guys have asked me about the Sunday chats. I have not done a Sunday chat in about a month. I had a, a, a string of Sundays there where I had to work pretty much all day on Sunday, like 10 in the morning to seven or eight at night and trying to do the live Sunday chats would have been hard because I would have to either lose some sleep and get up early and try to do them at a really early hour because sometimes I work really late on late on Saturday uh, or try to do them you know late in the evening on Sunday so I just cut out the Sunday chats uh, at least for a little while uh, and I, I gotta be honest I kind of like not having to be committed to something at a certain day i commit to taking into account that i'm going to release that on thursday but i don't necessarily have to be at my computer on thursday i can record taking into account wednesday night or wednesday morning or even tuesday if my wednesday if my wednesday and thursday are both messed up but the sunday chats because they're live i have to physically be here for those and I, I, it's it's hard to commit to that i, I did it for a little while and even then, I couldn't make it every Sunday, and sometimes I'd have to do it in the evening, sometimes do it in the morning, sometimes we'd have to adjust the time. It was tough. Uh, with my current job, because I don't work a set schedule, my schedule is always changing every week as far as the days I work and the times I work, it is really hard for me to commit to being somewhere at the same time on the same day every week. I just can't do it. As a matter of fact, you guys sometimes ask me, well, you know, why don't I do, you know, collaborative shows with other Linuxy YouTubers? You know, y'all do a, a podcast every week, you know, a certain day. Or, it's because because of my schedule. I, I can t tell you right now, there's no way I could ever commit to doing something like that with somebody else because I I, I couldn't make it. <laughs> 100% of the time. I, I just couldn't. So I would never uh, subject somebody else to that and, you know, tell one or two other people, hey, let's get together every week and do a show when I know that I, I'm not going to be able to, to to commit to something like that right now. Maybe if I change jobs and you know, who knows, who knows what the future uh, is, has in store for me. I may change careers at some point and maybe have something that has a better schedule so I can devote uh, a little more time to the channel. I know it's a little strange because so many YouTubers, like people that really take YouTube seriously, most of them know you need a set schedule, right? Because that's how people find you. That's how you build your community and your channel is they know, like Big Daddy Linux I mentioned, is starting at 7 o'clock here. How do I know that? It's because every Saturday at 7 o'clock, <laughs> that's when Big Daddy Linux Live starts. Uh, that's kind of what 
how most YouTubers work. You have a set schedule, you stick to it, and everybody knows your schedule. So even if the YouTube notifications aren't working, people can find you. Unfortunately, I can't do that. <laughs> so I just record videos when I can. I release them when I can. I do these live streams when I can. And I haven't done a live stream like one of these solo live streams I'm doing in at least three months probably. And I like doing these. I really do. These are fun. Uh, but sometimes it's hard to you know, find a block of time where I can just sit down and do one of these. Also, I need to make sure you know, I'm the only one on the network here at the house. Otherwise, uh, we could have some bandwidth problems. Yeah, we got a super chat from Robert. How you doing, Robert? Website fund, early tax return. <laughs> Appreciate that. Uh, not sure what I'll get back as far as a tax refund. We'll see. Yeah, 135 of you guys are watching in the chat, but I only have 35 thumbs up. Come on, thumbs up, guys. <laughs> I don't know if the thumbs up actually help, but it might. Might help me rank better in the YouTube algorithm, so feel free to thumbs up the stream if you're enjoying some of this. Have I tried WeChat? I have tried WeChat. Very similar to Ursi, both terminal based chat clients. Uh, both good. There's nothing wrong with either one of them. <laughs> Just install install both. Try both of them. See what you like. Uh, very similar, though. You do have to configure them a little bit. You know, it's not like I just launch RC and it magically connected to the Freenode network. You know, <laughs> there is a config file. I can't show you the config file because it might actually include a password for me to log into the Freenode network. I can't remember. So I won't show. But it's a simple config file. Dead simple. I'm sure... The Arch Wiki, maybe the Gentoo Wiki, have pages devoted to RC and to WeChat to get it configured, but it's not complicated. These are really easy programs to use, these IRC clients. How about a chat once a week or once in two weeks on any day? Yeah, that's what we're going to have to do. I'm just going to have to try to find time, make time for a chat every now and then. As far as the like, like the Sunday chats, the Zoom chats... Really, I probably just need to cut those out for the most part. I mean, I st I'll still do them, but it's try trying to, yeah, I'm going to do one, one a week, every week. Uh, it's, it was tough to commit to that. The other thing about the Zoom chats, uh, they're fun. I love them. I really enjoy interacting with you guys. Not that many people watch them, though. You know. <laughs> Let's be honest. You know, I'll be lucky to get a thousand views on one of those live Zoom chats. Uh, and that those a thousand views are just happened to be the people that watched it, you know, while it was happening live and a few hours after that. Nobody ever goes back way after the fact and watches like these live streams, even this live stream I'm doing right now. I'm going to get most of the views for this live stream today, maybe a, a little bit tomorrow. After that, nobody's ever going to watch this live stream again. So. That's part of the, you know, I, I dedicate a block of time to something that not that many people are interested in watching. I'd get much more views doing something, a pre-recorded show, you know, highlighting a distro or an application or, you know, some kind of tutorial. Ten times as many views on anything like that than I would a live stream. That's just the way it is. Now, the one... Uh, the chat that I will commit to at least once a month you guys know I've been trying to do the uh, patrons zoom chat every month which I haven't done one for the month of March we should do that sometime this week actually in the next couple of days I'll try to schedule one of those uh, zoom chats for me and my patrons to get together of course I'll stream it live on YouTube for everybody to watch but the patrons can join me on camera for the, for the zoom chats uh, so I'm, I'm definitely still going to commit to that once a month, at least once a month for the patrons. Uh, I know I haven't got around to doing one for March yet. We're halfway through March, so maybe this week while I'm on vacation, I'll take time to, to do that. Because that won't require any real uh, prep work. You know, I don't... Even the pre-recorded videos I do, they're not scripted. I don't do a, a ton of uh, work ahead of time on any of the topics that I discuss. But the live chats, I, I don't do any prep work at all. You guys saw those that were at 
the start of this stream, you know, the title was all wrong in OBS. I, the layouts were all wrong. You know, I had just sat down here and pressed record. That was my preparation for doing this live stream. You know, I fly by the seat of my pants. You know, I don't. The people that, you know, do hours of preparation for their videos and, and the people that spend hours editing their videos, I admire the hell out of you guys. Wow. I don't have that kind of time. <laughs> I really don't. Uh, and I spend so much time editing video anyway. The people that, you know, add all the whiz bang effects and, and annotate everything and, you know, do all the neat stuff. You know, whatever video editor they happen to be using. I, f I find that stuff really neat. I know how to do some of that stuff. But man, that stuff takes time, you know. I <laughs> like recording something, you know, start record, talk for 10, 15 minutes, hit stop record, render it in Caden Live. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> uh, now I do a little more than just that, but not much more than that. Yeah, thanks for the super chat, Chris. Love the content. I get you, even if you can't do the Zoom chats. Well, I still got Zoom. I'm not saying I can't do them. Definitely not going to commit to them anymore, though. It's just tough. At least right now. At least right now. We'll see what the future has in store. Yeah, DT, just chill 24-7 in this chat. Well, I could keep this terminal window open connected to this IRC room all day doesn't mean I'm gonna read anything that's going on I could though as long as one person is in the room this will the room will not go away actually the room will be here even if we all leave I registered this room with the free node network I actually did that a couple of weeks back just playing around with the free node network. I, I, I was curious myself, you know, I guys mentioned you know, I hang out in some of these IRC channels uh, every now and then. Just And one day I was like, oh, how do you create a channel on the free node network? So I pulled up a page over at freenode.net and it told me how to register my own channel on free node. It was a very simple process. So hashtag distrotube will be here. It's not going away. <laughs> Uh, my GitLab page again. That's not the scene I wanted. I will. I, one thing I do need to do this week, though, is figure out how to use Herbs Luft. Herbs Luft is going to be tough. Herbs Luft is different, way different than Xmonad. I loved Xmonad. I'm going to miss Xmonad. Not going to lie. I'm going to really miss Xmonad. I love that window manager. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. But don't you think your videos are all a bit repetitive? Uh, yeah. <laughs> no offense, of course. None taken. That's one of the things that you run into on, on YouTube, though, is if, if you do anything on YouTube, is, is trying to vary the content a little bit. Uh, and it's, it's kind of tough. Some people run into this problem in, in a bigger way than me. I mean, I do vary the content a little bit you know instead of distro hopping now I'm window manager hopping for example uh, so if you watched a lot of my earlier videos the videos I'm doing now not really anything like that uh, you guys that follow something like Big Daddy Linux Live all he does is Big Daddy Linux Live every Saturday night it's just a two hour live stream every Saturday night you know so it's kinda hard for you know some people to vary their content when pretty much all they ever do is the exact same thing all the time. That's just, you know, the nature of YouTube. Of course, if you start varying your content, then people will complain. Hey, I really like the content you were doing before. Now you done changed it. <laughs> uh. Yeah, Chas, taking into account is always different. That's one of the reasons why I started that uh, a few months ago. is just to do at least one show a week on the channel that's completely different than everything else. Um. Uh, Catching up on the, you know, latest news for Linux and tech. So, I'm glad you, you guys find that a nice change of pace every week. Every Thursday, you guys can catch a new episode of Taking Into Account. Yeah, Joe Panico. Hi, DT and Chad. How you doing, Joe? Hope you're doing well, sir. Yeah. Xmonad, really? No, the real window manager is awesome. 
I like awesome too. And eventually I probably live in awesome for a little while here on the channel. I've used awesome in the past. Awesome's great. I'll be fine in awesome. It's very much like DWM. It's just a little bit more extensible. A little bit better put together than DWM. Of course, awesome would be considered bloated though. Because it's so extensible because of the Lua language. Yeah, I really like your taking into account. Good stories not covered on other channels. Yeah, that's one of the things I want to do with that particular uh, series every week is, of course, some of the stories, the big stories, you know, I want to cover. But I, I do want to get into s stuff that's not often covered. Uh, stories that are kind of off the beaten track. Sometimes stories I find on random blogs or, you know, on a Reddit post somewhere. Yeah, I am, DT, are you going to try BSPWM anytime soon? Yeah, that will probably be the one I try after Herb's Lift. Because I really am running out of tiling window managers, like mainstream tiling window managers that people actually use. I mean, I've already covered the big ones. Uh, I3X Monad. Qtile is not a big one, but I, I try to promote it because I love it. <laughs> uh, Herb's Lift. What else have I tried? DWM. Actually, DWM. Not that many people use DWM because it's kind of a beast to get into because of all the patching. Uh, I'm gonna, gonna do BSBWM next and then Awesome. Awesome is a very popular tiling window manager. I should take a look at it on the channel at some point. But those seven or eight tiling window managers, that's pretty much it. That's the ones I, I, I really should cover. After that, I mean, there's, a, there's other tiling window managers out there, but they're Many of them are old, not developed anymore. Nobody really uses them. Um, yeah, let's see. Yeah, taking into account is great. Main reason I'm subscribed. Thank you, Horatio. Yeah, Luke Smith is outing himself as more and more of a right right wing extremist. What are your politics, and what do you think of right wing extremism in the Linux community? I usually don't discuss politics at all on the channel. Uh, as far as right-wing extremism, I, I don't. I really don't get into the labeling as far as extremists, as far as right-wingers or left-wingers. Uh, I think they're kind of kooks on either end of the spectrum. Uh, but they don't offend me. <laughs> I don't get offended by like you know if somebody is making a YouTube video and you know maybe they make some extremist remarks on whatever end of the political spectrum they're they're on I don't take offense to it personally uh because I I don't play that game <laughs> I'm I'm not wrapped up in any of that that's why I don't do politics on the channel for the most part it's, it just doesn't interest me as far as people that go out of their way to be extremists <laughs> in whatever fashion they're extremists in. Uh, I think some of it can be for shock value. I think they know it rubs people the wrong way. For me, personally, um, when people go out of their way to be shocking, usually I'm not impressed because <laughs> you're, I don't think anybody's going to say anything that's going to shock me, you know, not these days, not in the times we live in. Uh, you have any plan for the future in working with IT stuff? No, nothing planned. Let's see, please, no politics here. There's already enough of it elsewhere. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, politics, again, doesn't interest me at all. At all, so... As far as uh, Luke Smith uh, being some kind of right-wing extremism, he does lean very right-wing. I mean, I've I checked out a lot of his content. Uh, calling somebody an extremist, <laughs> though, I, I don't know if I would use that kind of terminology because I, I think you, you become part of the problem when you start labeling other people as extreme as much as the people that, quote, are extreme. <laughs> uh yeah, check out the IRC, the new IRC chat channel. Wow. Let's see what kind of chat's going on here. Politics or bloat? Yeah, we don't do uh, bloated politics here. Yeah, politics is too sucky. 
man, I used to use IRC a bunch of years ago for a game called E-Republic. Now that I look back, it's the most pay-to-win game that I've ever seen. Hmm. I've got a couple of different chats going. YouTube chat and the IRC chat. Let's see. Seagate or Western Digital? Uh, we're doing hard drives. You're doing SSDs. For hard drives, uh, I've always kind of stuck with Seagate. <laughs> For SSDs, uh, I've always stuck with Samsung. Why? It's just because they I, I buy them and they work. If they work, I mean, <laughs> uh, so like the Samsung Evo SSDs are great uh, for a system SSD. Now for actual like cheap discs, you know, that you're not really worried if the the drive fails. There are so many good cheap. SSD options now. You can get a 256 gig SSD for like 40 bucks now. You can get a 512 SSD for I don't know 70 bucks. Some something crazy. There there are a lot of really cheap SSDs out there now. For those of you that are really dedicated to storage, something like a NAS, you probably want to use the Western Digital Red CDs. They're designed for NAS storage. I don't have a NAS. I wish I did. If I had the money, I'd buy one of the Synology NAS pro products. <laughs> uh. Let's see. Yeah, DT, you should set some other mods on IRC and Discord to protect those who use it from spammers. You're right. I, I mentioned I haven't logged into Discord in at least six months. I'll log into it maybe later <laughs> and just randomly make some people moderators. IRC, I would love to set some of you guys as moderators here at the IRC channel. I don't know the command though, I'd have to look it up. <laughs> I'll look it up later. We'll get around to, to that though later too. I'll keep the IRC channel going though. Matter of fact, I'll keep this this window open maybe for a few days. And uh, I'll do some research, I'll do some googling and I'll, I'll see if I can figure out all the commands. Some of you guys are Looks like you're struggling with some of the commands. I see somebody was trying to figure out how to change their nickname. Uh, Guest704 changed their nick to Tech Heaven, or was trying to. I don't know if it worked for him. And if you guys actually want to use IRC a lot, most of the channels you're going to be interested in checking out are going to be on the Freenode network. So register your nickname with Freenode. That way, you always have the same nickname. Nobody else can register your nickname. So if I'm an unregistered user, and it means somebody else can register DistroTube. You know, once I close out RC here, it means I'm no longer here. I w was an unregistered user anyway. The next person that uh, joins the Freenode network and some channel can do their nickname as DistroTube. They can register it, and then I could never register it. Uh, so... If you want to keep your name, register over at the Freenode, Freenode.net, I believe. Let me Google this really quick. I'll share the link if I can. Freenode nickname registration. Let's see. Yeah, just Google Freenode registration. Freenode nickname registration is the page, and it'll tell you how to register your nickname. You do this message here, slash msg, nick serve, register, the password you choose, your email at whatever.com. <laughs> so, pretty, pretty simple. I, I registered my nickname uh, several months back, the DistroTube name I'm using. And since I can share links, I will actually post the link in the YouTube chat. So I just posted a link in the YouTube chat. I will also post a link in the IRC chat. All right, well, we got about uh, 15 minutes until seven o'clock. I, I definitely want to shut down the stream before seven. I know many of you guys will be wanting to move over to the Big Daddy Linux live stream. I will also 
go over there and check it out. I may not join them on camera, but I will definitely have the stream open and listen to whatever conversation they have going on today. I'm not sure if they're going to be reviewing a distro or an application. I, I didn't. I wasn't able to catch them last week. I had to work Saturday night, so I, did. I missed Big Daddy last Saturday. All right. NVMe prices are also dropping. Yes. As a matter of fact, one of the things I wanted to discuss very briefly is one of the things that I'm struggling with as far as my YouTube channel, of course, is time. One of the biggest time sinks I have is editing video. Not necessarily editing video because I already said I don't spend a lot of time on editing video because it's time consuming. Rendering video is has become a real issue. So I do taking into account episode 34 on Thursday. Runtime for that video probably averages around half an hour for the taking into account videos. That half hour video seriously takes me an hour to record, then another hour maybe of editing, putting all the various clips together. I, I do spend some time editing those taking into account episodes. And then to render that 30 minute video in Caden Live on my current equipment, will take an hour and a half. You know, and that's an hour and a half that I have to wait before I could even upload the video to YouTube, and that takes some time uh, before the video is finally available to watch in 1080p, you know, is at least a half hour after I upload the video. So, I mean, that's an all day project, basically, me recording, taking into account, not an all day project, but I need to have a block of about four hours, really just to give myself the time I need to make that video, that 30 minute video every day. And a lot of that, again, a good hour and a half of that chunk of four hours is just rendering the video. So I need a new machine. <laughs> I'm going to buy an, a, a new computer soon. It, it's time. I need, I need a better CPU for one thing. The uh, AMD FX 6300, the six core AMD FX that I have in this machine. This machine is about four, four years old now. It's a, fi it's a fine processor for what it was then. It's not a very powerful processor by today's standards at all. Uh, so I really need something really with more cores, more threads. Really, more threads would really improve something like video editing. So I need. I need a thread ripper. <laughs> Peter Jansen in, in the chat. He already knew where I was going. You got to get the thread ripper. You're right. I mean, that's what I have to do. I, I, I really need like a 12 core or even the 16 core thread ripper. I can't do a 32 core. That's just insanely expensive. The 12 core is really all I need. A 12 core thread ripper would have 24 threads. 24 would be nice. Boy, right now I have six. So <laughs> uh, that would be four times uh, and of course it's a better processor to begin with so it'd probably be really like 10 times better than the CPU I'm currently using so that's what I need to do I need to buy a new machine with a thread ripper uh, I could also upgrade my video card I'm using an Nvidia 1060 it's okay video card it's actually pretty decent but again to speed up some of what I do as far as video editing I also maybe do Improve some of the live streaming if I want to do more live streams like this in the future. I've kind of slacked off on them. I might upgrade the video card if I buy a new computer. But that's definitely in the works. And the next month, trust me guys, I'm going to have a new computer. I'm going to go ahead and, and make a, a probably a pretty big purchase. It's not going to be something cheap. <laughs> so, uh, probably going to look to spend maybe two grand on a new rig because I need to do it go team green so yeah so Nvidia will my next card be an Nvidia eh, you know what I might do AMD I've, al I've always been an Nvidia user always why because historically Nvidia just works better works better on Linux now in the last couple of years AMD has made major improvements now with the open source drivers things typically just work with those AMD cards where Nvidia you do have to jump through some hoops with Nvidia cuz you have to use the proprietary drivers with Nvidia you're not going to use the open source Nuvo drivers uh, and not get any kind of good performance so 
And Big Bud, don't go Team Red in the GPU department. Well, uh, I might. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we might do an AMD card. Some of those AMD cards, I mean, the performance for the price, it's not bad. But you're right, I should probably do like an NVIDIA 2080. If I've got that kind of kit. Well, now we're looking at probably, if I go Threadripper with something like a 2080, we're looking at like a three grand kind of machine. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's the next purchase. I, I, I've always been cheap and thrifty when it comes to hardware because I didn't do this YouTube channel. <laughs> You know, until about a year and a half ago. So actually needing a real machine to do anything, I never needed it before. I was always your basic Linux desktop user. I didn't even game. You guys know I don't game. So I didn't even need a real graphics card, a real CPU. I mean, it would help compiling things. If I wanted to you know, compile a kernel or something like that, yeah, having a, a better CPU helps. But it's not the end of the world. But now, I probably... You know, I need to <laughs> take my hardware situation a little more seriously. So, yeah, consult us a bit before you buy the Threadripper hardware to prevent any mistakes. We'll let you know. Are you reliant on NVENC? Yes, if you use NVIDIA, you have to use NVENC. But uh, you're asking, are you reliant on NVENC since there isn't really an equivalent on the AMD side? Isn't there an AMD uh, equivalent? Uh, not sure what it's called. I know there is a setting in OBS if you're using AMD cards uh, for some kind of NVENC like experience. And all the, the NVENC uh, does, for those of you using an NVIDIA card, what he's talking about there is NVENC allows you to basically offload some of the work that's done by the CPU to the GPU and something like OBS for example like if I was live streaming I'm using my in I'm using my Nvidia card to do this live stream of course and I'm using Nvenc to the to do this live stream my Nvidia 1060 basically is making this live stream possible without Nvenc a lot of the work is going to be loaded to the offloaded to the CPU and my CPU I just told you is an AMD FX 6300 this stream is going to suck if I didn't, if I didn't use NVENC. Yeah, with NVIDIA, you get tearing and KDE, yes. That's always been a problem. The other problem with NVIDIA is Wayland. Yeah. There are some problems with NVIDIA. Yeah, I, I, meant, I mentioned I've always been an NVIDIA user, but again, there are... I'm, I'm not oblivious to the problems <laughs> that come with being an NVIDIA user. Yeah, AMD support is, AMD Linux support is really good. Yes, yeah, AMD has gotten so much better, uh, mainly because of the drivers. Now that the drivers are, are baked into the kernel and the open source drivers are really, really good. Like the open source AMD drivers are completely usable for doing real stuff. The NVIDIA open source drivers are not usable at all. Yeah, the RX 580 and the RX 570 were the king of the sub $250 graphics cards. Yeah, for a long time. Yeah, the Vega 56 beats the 1070, does it? I wouldn't expect that. But I guess if you say so, uh, yeah, that's sh shocking. The Radeon 7 is on par with the 2080. Yeah, I would expect that. The Radeon 7, the Radeon 7 is, a, is a, a strange kind of card because it has, what, 16 gigabytes of that, uh, what, that high bandwidth memory on board. The Radeon 7 is almost more like a workstation kind of card rather than a card you would use for gaming. Which is interesting because I mean it's it's really kind of unique as far as you know, its place on the market. Matter of fact, the Radeon Seven, because of that aspect, would be great for video editing, for example. Radeon Seven is also quite expensive. I think. What are they running? 
seven eight hundred dollars if you can find one of course you're i'm also going to run into the same problem with the nvidia cards because of the crypto miners the uh the nvidia 2080s kind of hard to come by uh yeah i have nvidia and i have i have no tearing in kde whenever i use it and pass through is fixable just make it se seems like it's a real pc and not a vm yeah, the KDE tearing issue is is fixable. You have to play with the settings in uh, the NVIDIA settings program. You have to, what, turn off flipping or s something. I, I forget. It's been a long time since I used Plasma on my, my machine here. But you, you can fix some of that tearing. Yeah, DT had... Horrible tearing in KDE. Yeah, look at some of my old videos. Yeah, I tried to live in KDE Plasma for a month. I did live in KDE Plasma for a month. And yeah, I had some screen tearing, screen artifacts, and just weird things going on. And But, you know, that again, I'm not the only one that has that problem. It's a common problem with KDE and NVIDIA users. Yeah. AMD drivers are good, but NVIDIA still work way better if you use the proprietary drivers, absolutely. And the NVIDIA proprietary drivers are just fantastic. Yeah, NVIDIA launched the 1070 Ti because the Vega 56 got a higher frame per second on average than the 1070. Wow. Good for AMD. I like competition, though. I'm glad they're, they're, they're trying to get in the game a little bit because, quite frankly, they're still... They're really not competition to NVIDIA. NVIDIA's king as far as the graphics card market. AMD is, is an alternative, but in no way is AMD really a, a legit competitor to NVIDIA yet as far as price per performance. The NVIDIA cards are just, just fantastic. They really are. Yeah, the Radeon 7 is more of a server card. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if you look at the specs of the Radeon 7, it is, again, a really unique card. Again, it's, it's more like a, a, a really cheap kind of quadro. <laughs> kind of, you know, this is for like doing scientific uh, calculations or something, you know, more than trying to get, you know, great frame per second on, on you know, your Steam games. Yeah, you are correct on the Radeon 7. It's a rebranded, somewhat handicapped workstation card. Yeah, it's kind of like a hybrid, right? It's not really a workstation card. Yeah, lower bit width for floating point. I swear, DT, you go team green and I'm reporting, unsubbing, blocking, unfriending, and you're off the Christmas card list. <laughs> well, too late. I'm already on team green. You see the NVIDIA box back there. I mean, that's what I'm running now. I have a NVIDIA 1060, regardless of what, you know, happens to be on the next machine I buy. So I've got the 1060, and it's not going anywhere. It may stay in this computer, or it may come out of this computer and go in... The new one, I may have multiple graphics cards in that case. So. Yeah, I've never ever managed to fix an NVIDIA GTX 960 on KDE. It made me move to i3. Yeah, I had the same solution, actually. That month I lived in Plasma, my solution for fixing the tearing, I installed OpenBox. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's a Radeon Instinct card, basically. Yeah, their, their workstation card is the Instinct. Yeah, not really a server card, more a work card. Yeah, for scientific computing, for, uh, yeah, CAD. I tell you another thing that the Radeon 7 is probably really good for because of how it's built is uh, crypto mining. <laughs> so those of you interested in that. Yeah. Of course, again, it looks like the crypto miners, all they want are uh, 2080s and 2080Ti's and you know, the really high-end... NVIDIA cards, man, it is crazy uh, how little stock of those cards are out there still. In the last couple of years, it's been crazy. And then the prices of GPUs is through the roof. These cards should not be as expensive as they are. Of course, RAM has also been a problem. RAM is much more expensive than what it really should be. Hmm. 
Yeah, it's a miracle that AMD competes at all. It really is. AMD is a very small company, too, compared to the likes of NVIDIA and Intel. <laughs> yeah. But we're, we, we tend to root for companies like that. We root for the little guy. We, we root for the underdog. Yeah, Big Pod says, yeah, the old system can be a NAS. I thought about doing that. Man, I'm going to have the machine anyway. The CPU doesn't matter in a NAS. Uh, you can have a garbage CPU and a NAS. All, all, all this computer would be, if I did NAS, network attached attach storage, would be uh, for storage, right? It's just to stick as many big hard drives in it as possible. Matter of fact, I already have an IC dock <laughs> in here, so I already have swappable bays. Uh, yeah, it would be really easy to turn this computer into a, into a NAS. Yeah, upgrade this old system as a NAS. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, it's 7.01. I know some of you guys are going to want to hop over and check out Big Daddy Linux Live before I go. Let's also check out what's going on. You guys that are hanging out in the DistroTube IRC. Yeah, be, be right back. Beer time. I'm way ahead of you. <laughs> that was Mr. GFY. Yeah. We need some bots in here. Yep, IRC bots. You know what? That's that might be a project I I do this week too. That would be cool. Rainbow text. <laughs> uh, okay, guys. Well, I appreciate all you guys hanging out. Uh, still about 120 of you guys hanging out watching the live stream. Again, kind of an impromptu live stream. I know. Earlier this afternoon, I just decided. You know what? I, it's been so long since I did a live stream. I just needed to do one. So. Uh, Again, I'm, I'm taking the week off from my real job this week, but I will do some stuff on the channel, not committing to anything other than taking into account on Thursday, though. But I, I'm sure, you know, because I'm going to be playing with some stuff, <laughs> learning Herb Sleuth, for example, anything that I come across this week that I find interesting and I want to put on video and upload it to YouTube, you guys will get some content this week. So I'm not going to not going to disappear. We're not dropping off the face of the earth. Um. Uh, and then sometime this week, I also mentioned, I haven't done a, a patrons-only Zoom chat for the month of March. We need to get one of those in. So those of you that are subscribed to my Patreon, be looking in the next few days for that. I'll make a post over there. I'll announce a couple of days ahead of time, hopefully, let you guys know when and where we'll get together and do one of the patrons-only Zoom chats. So, yeah, Peter says, get enough sleep. Absolutely. That's one of the things I, I, the very first day off, which was today, I couldn't do because I had some stuff to do, but tomorrow, Sunday, sleeping till noon. <laughs> that, I, I've actually wrote that in my, my planner, sleep. That is all we're doing on the first day, just sleep. After that, then we'll get some work done. Yeah, STS Tech. <laughs> Raid Big Daddy Linux. Yeah, matter of fact, I'm, I'm heading over there right now. I'm going to check it out. I'll probably just hang out in the chat, though. I don't think I'll join them on camera tonight. Or maybe I will. But I think I just want to sit and watch the show and relax and, you know, drink a couple of more Blue Moons. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and shut down the stream. Before I go, of course, I do need to thank a few people. This show was made possible by Ansem, Carlos, Chris, Douglas, Dylan, Leo, Rob, Robert, and Tony. They are the producers of the show. They produce this live stream here this evening. <laughs> love those guys. I also love all those other guys. You see those names on the screen. Those fine ladies and gentlemen that help support me over on uh, Patreon. Without you guys, a lot of the equipment I buy would not be possible. You guys are going to Hopefully provide some help in that Threadripper purchase because that's definitely coming and I probably do need to make a jump up in graphics cards. We'll see. Will I be able to afford a 2080? Probably not. 2070? Possibly. All right, guys. Peace.